I had my son as a first time mother, I was clueless about what to feed my child. And um, when I started feeding him, what I thought was ideal, um, he developed rickets. His meals were deficient in certain nutrients such as vitamin D, calcium and the likes. The pediatrician and the dietitian recommended some things for him, but they were things that were not tasty. Even I won't eat them. But I understood the science behind it. And so what I did was to reduce that to a formula um, using my computer and maths background. And then I started to read on maximum nutrient absorption. And so I developed and created recipes that were helping. And it was back to normal in three months or less. And then I decided, let me help other mothers as well. It's not just about me. I realized that Nigeria has a really, really high infant mortality rate that was nutrition related. And so I knew I had to do something about it. We saw the challenge in Nigeria, like it's very difficult with our electricity. From a very young age, everybody's used to saying up Nepa. As I just got more exposed, I saw that that's actually not a challenge that is witnessed in a lot of the world, right? It's very unique to us in Africa, especially. So I was very determined to at least be part of that solution to fixing you know, the energy crisis that we face in Nigeria and Africa as well. The Boko Haram insurgency involving young children from the northern part of the country, mostly who, who, the, who did not have opportunity to go to formal education. And I took inspiration from the Bring Back Our Guest campaign. I must bring national attention, at least national attention, to this issue. You know, I actually grew up in Ajigula and I had sev several experiences from um, dropping out of school to um, going to school without eating. I said to myself, you know, that I was going to pay it forward. I was going to help other people. Nigeria is uh, going through a waste management crisis. I had it in me to come up with a solution for that. So at some point, my house became the holding ground for the street garbage. <laughs> and that was how we said, find out what next do we do with this? Who are the off-takers? What, what, material, what products can come out of this? At that time, there was no made in Nigeria baby food. There was zero, none. It didn't exist. I knew that I wanted to do this. and I didn't know how to make a business out of it. And I didn't even have the capital, so that was how I started. When I launched out, a lot of mothers then sent me messages to say that if this is real, we want it. I'm like, yes, it's real. Pay into my account, and in five days, you get the food. And so they paid into my account. It was their money that I took to market. The first thing I did was to go to Ladipo and buy a fairly used food, food processor. And you know, I was so excited, so happy. That was just how I started. It was my customers that provided my capital. The only thing I had to my name was my phone and the big dream. The story started in 2012 when I finished my NYC. Leap Africa organized the program and I was just this young guy in the room and they were training us on how to, you know, build successful companies, build successful social enterprises, you know, then there was no SIP. That was when I made up my mind that I was going to be a social entrepreneur. I, I became an SIP fellow in 2019. In the course of my research, trying to read up, you know, what young people are doing in the nonprofit space, I realized that a couple of the young pe pe persons who I knew at the time who were doing great stuff were previous SIP alumni. What's this SIP thing about? I think it's something I would like to be part of. So I applied and I was one of the lucky few who got in at my first application. I was not going in an organization. It was more like a passion. But I had passion without skills. So joining the SIP was, was a, a transformation. So I got trained, you know, I got equipped. I understood what I really wanted to do beyond passion. The inspiration for SIPA is coming from an older program that started as long as we had started the youth leadership program in 2004. We were reaching out to young people in Nigeria, equipping them with leadership skills and challenging them to create sustainable solutions or what we described at the time as community development projects. And because of that, we saw a lot of amazing change projects emerge, which came back to aggregating these projects together to say, how about we pick the most outstanding from these projects and showcase them to the world? And at the time, it didn't come with anything special. It didn't come with a lot of money. 
or even any money at all when we first started. And as it moved on, we actually found that there were more Nigerians, particularly young people, who were doing similar things that we had seen our our D's do. They were creative in the solutions they were rolling out. They were passionate, definitely. And we decided to open it up by calling for entries of young Nigerians who thought they were change makers, who thought they were change agents, who thought they were already doing something in their community. And then when we started recognizing them, we saw that it's not enough to recognize them. We need to also resource and equip them to be able to build their enterprises beyond pop and shop. A lot of small businesses or startups don't go beyond the five-year mark. And so these are the statistics that began to inform the intervention called the Social Innovators Program. You know, one of the things that we do, which makes us stand out, is what we call the Investment Readiness Training, whereby our fellows, or like we call them entrepreneurs, go through a grilling 17 weeks uh, training nine, of nine modules on investment readiness to ensure that even at the end of this um, training and the end of this accelerator program, they don't just go back home you know, with knowledge and you know, we want them to actually be able to go out there and pitch to you know, investors, you know, impact investors. We want them to be able to raise funding you know, for their business. That class was my first um, interaction direct interaction with an, with an investor helped me understand the foundation of how an investor thinks and how to value my business, what areas of my business needed strengthening. How to raise money, Itiva has gone to raise almost $3 million in grants, you know, how to set up a board, how to register your organization, distinguishing between social enterprise, uh, non-profit, for-profit, I think I made the right decision to do for-profit. And all these little things, you know, all come together to build you as a social enterprise and as a social entrepreneur. The online classes, the philanthropy university online courses that we took on advocacy, the action plan we designed for a whole year. We did all of our structuring. We understand, you know, what it meant to build a structure for an, for a startup, right? Because. For me, I'm coming from a medical background. I'd not, you know, led any startups before. I didn't know what a board was. I didn't know that, you know, it was important, you know, to have a board. So that was even the year we did. So everything came during the SIP program. You know, interestingly, that, that became a very a remarkable part of the program. Brought new part, new partners, new individuals who were willing to support and that brought more value to the fellows because we, we were matching fellows based on their needs to SPACs that could provide or meet those needs the models, the mentorship, even when we invite them to um, visit our various businesses across um, Africa and wherever we operate, um, it's for them to have a clear understanding of what it takes to build a sustainable business. And that's what we're providing with our partners, Leap Africa. We're providing them with the resources and I would say um, knowledge to grow sustainable businesses that would support Africa's development. I think for us, um, the, the, the unique nature of this project is that there are many LEAP SIP alumni that come on board and they've already had experience implementing different projects, but then when they partner with World Connect, we come from the aspect of focusing on community development and they're not so much focused on then going back and redoing the projects they've already done, but they're willing to start afresh and anew and really identify what the community needs. And most times they already know what they need because they've already worked with them previously. I can't, I can't place any value to it. You know, being in the same room with those people, I may not have been in the same room with them again. We will not have crossed paths again. Um, I've even co-written grants with some of the alumni, alumni of you know, SIP, you know, fellowship program. So it's, it's, been, it's been a friendship that is sustained it was inspiring to sit next to someone who had big visions for climate change, who had big visions for education and all of that, and it sort of like, you know, ignited the fire in me. It was a safe space and it was inspiring to see that, you know, it wasn't just me doing this thing in my own space and all of that. One of the critical parts of the Social Innovators Program is that there's a three to six month mentorship phase where they are having sessions with their mentors, these fellows, and their mentors are specifically picked based on the areas of need it's the areas of interest that the fellows have. It's what we call mentor matching. And uh, we, we match 
our, our fellows with industry experts from across the world ensuring that oh this young lady is in agriculture we want her to be able to work with an established you know um, person in the field of agriculture to be able to hold their hands for a period of you know three months to six months and we also encourage that these people continue this you know mentorship relationship even past the accelerator program i'm still in touch with my mentor here today um so we had very solid uh, mentors on the program and then the speakers as well i was very impressed because i didn't think that we were going to get that type of engagement i mean leap africa is quite very good when it comes to connecting you to opportunities. I remember there was a time myself and Femi, you know, had some very interesting meetings and then we got connected to Ford Foundation. So for instance, now planning to work with um, IIF, right? It was only a partnership that only could have been possible through Leap Africa. I probably would never have gotten any introduction, even if I probably would have messaged them hundred times on LinkedIn or whatever, but that introduction was made possible, you know, through them and so many other, you know, introductions that have been made. Anytime we're making an application or trying to apply for a program, the fact that we are um, alums of Leap Africa, it makes it, it gives us that edge, you know, and we get asked about it, or oh, how was the program? That's something that we wear very proudly anytime, anytime we're talking about, you know, what we've gone through. Once you're an SIP fellow, you stay with, within that community, Leap is there to support you in different ways. So I remember we had to jump in, do product development workshops for some past SIP fellows, help, help some of them rethink um, their business plans, or maybe just provide the Leap facilities for them to conduct their trainings, or write that one important reference letter that will get them that visa, or provide that funding, or speak on their behalf, on behalf of, to one funder or to one high-level partner that they require in their journey. So it's a lot of that business support service, social sector support service um, that, that Leap also provides in the background. You know, and, be, and become a win behind the sale of all these SIP fellows and along. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, but the journey of a, a thousand miles does not end with one step. You have to take the second step and the third step and the 500th step and so on until you get to the thousand steps. Set milestones along your way, and when you achieve those mi milestones, Remember to stop and celebrate with your team. When it was time for the, uh, what's it called, the award, they said, well, I'm like, me, I mean, I did, there are other people that, you know, I was expecting to win. I, I, I did even consider, you know, myself to be um, remarkable, you know, compared with those other people. And, you know, I was really um, grateful for that recognition. Finding young people who have committed and dedicated their lives to social good and recognizing them in, a, in an ecosystem, in a, in a country where we are never recognized. Um, that's a very, very significant, you know, um, value. The program has been always, always highlighted by the award ceremony. Uh, and that's where we had a lot of other side events happening. So we had panel conversations. Uh, we had a keynote uh, address from very interesting speakers over the years. The social enterprise space when it comes to youths in Africa is highly um, under supported and we felt that this is um, a way for us to come in and the way that we are doing it is um, giving seed funding to these entrepreneurs to be able to scale their businesses. We won a prize money of um, a million naira. You know, we just pushed it directly into the business. Drying has always been a big bottleneck. We had a dryer, but it was not big enough. And then that prize money went directly into um, acquiring a dryer. Drying is still a bottleneck. Um, the image behind me <laughs> is a dryer. This is like 10x the capacity of um, what we got from SIP. So that simple act alone got me to meet the president of Nigeria because then in 2016, when I did the fellowship, I was chosen as um, uh, one of the uh, most um, innovative um, entrepreneurs in Nigeria. And I, we got like a presidential recognition from the, the president. We have fellows who are, you know, getting recognition on the global space, fellows who have been identified for the Mandela Washington Fellow, and fellows who have gone on, gone on higher to, you know, get awards on global scales. 
part of what we do is ecosystem participation, ecosystem influencing, ecosystem building. In fact, one of our strategic pillars is ecosystem building. And we see this as an opportunity through the Social Innovators Program and Awards to really build out our ecosystem, to identify great innovation, great innovators, and award them, recognize them, appreciate them, so that we can encourage them to keep going. We can encourage them to be more driven, more committed to the work that they're doing. I think that should be 2018. Uh, the woman was a secretary in a school, and then she said she, she had quit her job and she was doing baby bros full time. I was like, ah, who sent you? <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> we do two tons per, per month, and we're trying to 10x to 20 tons per month. We ship to UK twice a month. Uh, we are trying to set up a warehouse so that people can just order on the website directly in UK. We are doing Amazon. Uh, fulfillment by Amazon, we are doing uh, fulfillment by private warehouses. Since the training, we've gone on to do amazing things. We've um, launched Shisabi. Shisabi is a learning platform for young girls who lack formal education. They can learn on their smartphones in, their, in the comfort of their homes. We have an innovation center where uh, low-income youngers and women come to learn skills for free. We have um, an app on Play Store for our women to request for funding from us. We are hitting almost our 5,000 milestone in terms of yeah, cancer patients. Um, in terms of our teleconsultation services, we've done over 37,000 minutes in teleconsultation services, be it our one-on-one -on -one consultation or our multidisciplinary um, consultation that involves multiple specialists. But more importantly, we've done, we've navigated more than 200 patients across Nigeria to various cancer facilities where they've started treatment and they've successfully completed treatment. Doing a good year of um, uh, Reswaye, um, the kids beat garden in Elegushi, Lagos, and what she's doing is phenomenal. We've had people like Michael Sumbola, who owns or founded the Lagos Food Bank Initiative, and he's worked with government. He's been able to forge partnerships across private and public sector. Many people know that cancer is an isolating condition, right? And so for a lot of our patients, when they are diagnosed with cancer, they have no one to turn to. But we've, some of the feedback we've gotten from our patients is that that community has been a source of inspiration, a source of strength for many of them. Because then you find like minds, you find people who are on that same journey with you, and you're able to work hand in hand together to achieve, you know, your best potential. We used to call them no-income women because they had no source of livelihood. But now, after they made mama money, they now have a skill that they are using to generate income, to feed their children, to educate their children. So we have many amazing stories. The CO2 that is being, that we're offsetting by these solar installations being installed. So on a per 0.5 kVA, system that is installed were offsetting around 110 kg of CO2 from every installation that we do and till date we've done over 100 installations so far. It's been fulfilling, it's been rewarding and we've made an impact. We've won both local and international uh, accolades and award for this and uh, people have been impacted, our community has been cleaned up, households have been feeding off uh, recycling their waste so it's been very very fulfilling. When I went to business school, the lecturers, all but one, said it was a pro it was something that would die on arrival because it didn't make sense for strangers, people who don't know me, to buy food for their baby on the internet. It didn't make sense. You know, looking back, I wouldn't have dreamt that we'd be here today. We are in our own property. Uh, we are expanding even the facility. But the one that counts for me every day is to be able to say. You know, when mothers come to say, thank you, my baby's now eating, my baby's enjoying the meals, uh, my baby is growing, you know, my baby's weight has changed. You have not lived this life if you have not changed someone else's life, right? And so for me, it's really making that change, making that drive in my community. And more importantly is, people always say, bloom where you are planted, right? Bloom where you are planted. And where I'm planted is on this earth, in this Nigeria, in this Lagos, and it's my mission that I would ensure that nobody, because I've been opportune to go through medical school, 
I've seen what cancer does. I know how many deaths we record due to cancer every year in Nigeria. And so I'm on that mission to say those numbers, we're going to change it. We're going to reduce the mortality rates associated with cancer in Nigeria and even in Africa, if possible, by God's grace. So you can have this desire in your heart to do good. You can step up your game by coming outside, doing, leveraging everything that you have. It might be your network. But if you do not have funds to do some certain things, one will be limited. See, one of the best things that can happen to a social impact um, idea is to have consistent partners. That extra effort of increasing impact and effort over the years requires sustained partnership not um, the short-term one-off partnership that you can't count on and bank on. And this is where I will give kudos to Union Bank. You know, Union Bank was that steady, committed, consistent partner that we could bank on, that we could um, work with, think through. And it wasn't just about them providing money. It was the fact that from the senior leadership downwards, they were heavily invested, you know, into, into the work. So they, they, were, they provided facilities when we needed it. They served as mentors, as facilitators. That's from the CFO to the... C level to the mid level to the Z, you know, all of the entire team was heavily involved year in, year out. So, a big thank you to, to Union Bank for that consistent um, effort, sustained effort over the, over the couple of years. And further down the line, we had Sahara Foundation coming, Sahara Foundation and Ford Foundation. That uh, unrestricted funding, you know, that came in to support our work was very, very important and useful to sustain effort. But secondly, to also expand the work so um, beyond just Nigeria. So SIP later evolved to having um, um, Pan-African Fellows, right? So, and that's big kudos to, to Ford Foundation and the Sahara um, um, Foundation. Uh, we've also had other partners who have either given us space that we ought to have paid for, um, for free, we, we, you know, gratis. We had the Nigerian bureaus who've been very supportive, um, especially with refreshments for the fellows over the years, especially when we have the, the workshops. But more importantly was that they provided Star Academy, a major input into delivering the SIP, the workshop facilities that helped us to deliver excellent, excellent uh, workshop uh, every year in, year out. So very big kudos to Nigerian bureaus. I have to also mention Kojito because Kojito have been very supportive, especially with putting together the events. Uh, and we've had quite a number of other partners here and there who come in and support either the event or the awards, or they just give to us um, in their time, in, in kind, uh, throughout the, the course of the program every year. At Leap Africa, we are very, very big on collaborations and partnerships. Uh, and going forward, we are really looking to see how to even make our conference and the conversation about social entrepreneurs or entrepreneurship bigger and larger and better than what we have by linking hands and collaborating with more already in that space without having to reinvent the wheel and without having to um, repurpose the resources when we could really combine the resources. Sometimes in the morning when I wake up and I feel very tired and burnt out and depressed and looking like the, the energy is gone, just a message from someone that, oh, Itayo, thank you so much, I just got a job, you know, brightens up the entire week. That is great achievement. Whatever you're building, you must have a mindset of a social entrepreneur, you know, because that is how you give yourself, you know, kudos in the long term for all the hard work that you've done. The reason why we have many of, you know, the technological advancements, the, many of the amazing solutions we have around us, it didn't start today. It started with people seeing problems, right, and saying they wanted to solve those problems. Social innovation, is an, it, it, it should be a part of us. It should be a lifestyle for many of us in the sense that if you are seated in any part of the world, there is always going to be one problem or the other. How are you solving that problem? And I think that's really what social innovation and the Clarion Call especially young people, more importantly, because these problems affect us more. The political issues, the climate, environmental issues. There's no greater time that Social Innovators Programme 
is needed than now. There's an opportunity for us to do things in a bigger and better way. We want to galvanize more innovators. We want innovation to be the mainstay, not a side thing you do, but the main thing you do, the main thing you think of. We want entrepreneurship to be impact-driven, all entrepreneurs. Our chance to achieve the, the sustainable development goals and beyond just the goals, to actually achieve the sustainable development of Africa, our chance, our big bet is on young people. You know, and we have to bet on young people in different, from, you know, in different areas and different aspects. But a major, major community of people we have to con constantly invest in as social entrepreneurs. Um, and I know that LIPA has great aspirations to further deepen the impact of um, the SIP program and even expand the support that they provide to that community and expand you know, the, the size of the pie, the people they can provide the opportunity to in the long run. And all of this would only happen with partners, right? Partners who, who can be co-liberals, who can, you know, co-create, you know, who can help help to deliver this vision and bring their own inputs, bring their own ideas, bring their own social assets and resources. For us in the next 10 years, it's more collaboration, it's deepening our partnerships with people, players and allies in this industry to ensure that Leap Africa is not just seen as uh, an education focused organization, but also very heavy with providing opportunities of investment for social entrepreneurs in Nigeria and on the continent. One of the things that we've been talking about internally is, you know, the need for more funding, but not just funding as a whole, but investment. We need more private individuals, private organizations to turn their, their profit into supporting these social entrepreneurs, giving them investment, seed funding, like what our very good funders, Sahara Foundation is doing, supporting these young individuals with $5,000 each. I see a future where we are able to you know, reach out not only to 20 youths. I see a future where we can give funding to even 100 youths because there's a lot of resource to be tapped into. I'm calling on all stakeholders, all implementing partners, funding bodies and multilateral organizations to come together as one and take the SDG 17 really serious. The idea of pulling resources together to ensure that um, one collective goal is met. I don't see the need for us to work in silos and not to you know, consolidate our efforts. So, Leap Africa, thank you for doing the work that you are doing. And I know we still need, because we have a lot of youth out there that need these trainings like the one that I got. So imagine if I had not gotten that training, imagine if I had not gotten this partnership that we have gotten to, we won't be here today. So um, Leap Africa should just continue doing what they are doing because they are playing a very, very important and crucial role in developing youth across Africa. We want to scale and reach every African country and even beyond to really mobilize social change makers, young people across the continent to do excellent work, to help them do it better, bigger, more impactfully and more effectively. For every innovator we invest in, for every social entrepreneur we invest in, we are actually impacting potentially millions. We anticipate that those numbers will also grow in the next five years through our wraparound support, through more funding, and how well we intend to connect them across the regions. Happy 10th anniversary, SIP. Um, thank you for making a difference. Thank you for supporting social innovators. We are always supporting, but now we have someone supporting us. I'm very happy with uh, what we've done so far. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, many more years to come. Thank you so much for all you do for social innovators across Africa. Congratulations to Leap Africa on the 10th anniversary of the Social Innovators Program. And shout out to all the social innovators out there. Keep up, keep up the good work and uh, more, many more years to come. Congratulations, Leap Africa. Congratulations to the SIP program. I congratulate you for making it to 10 years. I think it speaks to the nature of the organization and the nature of the leaders that are working behind. Congratulations, Leap Africa. Happy anniversary to the Social Innovators Program. Happy 10th year anniversary of the SIP program, which I'm a product of. So happy 10th year anniversary. And please keep pioneering and nurturing future change agents. Happy 10th year anniversary to SIP and to the entire Leap Africa ecosystem. 
I hope that we are all going to be together to celebrate the 20th anniversary. Congratulations Leap Africa for 10 years of leading transformation on the continent. We look forward to seeing what you do in the next 10 years to strengthen the ecosystem in support of young African leaders. Happy 10th anniversary to the SIP. It is amazing that you have stayed consistent over 10 years, continually raising change agents across the continent of Africa. It's something to be proud of, very proud of Leap Africa for all the amazing work that's being done and excited about 10, 20, 30 more years of SIP across the continent. Shout out to all the Social Innovators Program and awards fellows and alumni. Happy 10th anniversary. We are so happy we've come a long way with you. This is a big milestone and we are happy that you're part of that journey with us.